Hello, I'm Kevin Siege and I'm back with another fly tying video. As the sun and summer rapidly approach, we have to change tactics and target a new species, such as the bass, largemouth and smallmouth bass that live in our lakes and rivers here in western Pennsylvania. And there's nothing more fun than catching those fish on these top water flies. Today I'm going to share with you a couple of deer hair bugs that are made essentially the same way with slight variations that make them two totally different baits. The first and the one we'll concentrate on is a deer hair mouse and we'll get into that in a little bit. We're looking at the Mustad C52S um, in size 2 and if one could fall in love with a hook for bass I think this is the one I would pick. Um, interesting here I'm showing the rat tail cord that I use for the eyes and we'll see how we do that. And then I have these silly legs or silly worms. Um, I bought these in a different color thinking that the trout might like something more earth toned. Um, that didn't really work out. And, um, but our mouse is going to be made out of that um, deer hair. And let's get a hook and a vise and get started. So I have some Superfly and 3 aught. These are deer hair bugs and we're going to be using heavier thread than we were using in other videos and for the smaller flies, trout patterns. And uh, this stuff is almost unbreakable and I use it a lot of times for spinning deer hair. Um, in this case, we won't really be spinning the deer hair. You'll see that soon. So what we're going to do is use some of this... Um, UV pink dubbing and build up a little ball here at the tail end of the, the hook. And I'm also going to use a layer of dub thread to hold that um, silly silicone worm uh, tail in place. That stuff is miserable stuff to work with and tie to a hook. And there are various methods of doing that. And one of the ones, and, and more appropriate in this case, is having some dubbing to wrap around the, the thread, and it seems to bite into that, that silicone worm material pretty well. So it does slip around a little bit, and um, it's not an exact science, but it's pretty hard to pull this thing out once you get it tied in place. So a couple of wraps and a good pull tight on that thread, and, um, it's in there for good. So we'll trim off the excess and throw a few more wraps in. And what I'm going to do here is put in a whip finish and we're going to put another hook in the vise. And you'll see why in a second. And I mentioned that there were two bass bugs that we're making. Essentially, they're made the same way, but slight variations make them two different baits. So one of the variations is the tail, right? So we have a, a silly legs tail on this one and it'll become a mouse. Um, we're looking at that pink ball of dubbing. Um, there was a fellow who did this in another video and he, uh, I don't know, it's kind of an aiming point for a, a fish chasing a fly. Um, we needed dubbing anyways and it, it seemed to be um, a good idea at the time. So let's get our thread started on another hook. And the difference here, the, the other bass bug that we're going to make is a deer hair frog. And, you know, of course, frogs have legs. And one method of imitating frog legs on the back of a bass bug is to um, tie a couple of feathers back there, and especially the curved ones, and aim them out away from the hook or away from each other. And uh, they more or less, they kick around back there and they simulate legs. So same thing here. We'll use a little bit of uh, dubbing, create a ball and use it uh, as a little bit of a target on the back of the hook, but also to hold those, those feathers that we're going to tie in, um, hold them out away from the hook or to help divide them. So there's my ball dubbing. And we'll bring in almost any hen hackles, even some saddle hackles would work for this, but 
Um, I like to put two on each side. These are barred black and olive. Uh, I bought a, I think it was a chickaboo pelt. And it, it's very useful. There are many different feathers on it. Some of them are marabou-like, and I can use them on nymphs and woolly buggers and other things. And then I've used these feathers, the longer ones I'll, I'll wrap, use them for um, wrapping and adding feathers that way in certain fly patterns. And then they make good um, feathers for various streamers, and in this case, the legs on this bass buck. So you can see I didn't actually strip them all the way up to the point where I tied them in. Um, I started doing this. I don't know if it holds them any tighter, um, but I don't have to have them all stripped to the exact same length before I start. I can kind of just peel them back, set the length, and, and tie them in. So I don't know if it's a real time saver. It's just something I learned to do. So in this case, we'll throw a few more wraps and I think I'll also add a drop of super glue. Head cement would work as well. Um, I'm going to put a few more wraps here and we'll finish this and then I'll set it aside and we're going to switch back and, and finish our mouse. But I wanted to show you what I do for a tail on the frogs. Tighten up our whip finish. Not sure how tight that got. I can kind of see a little gap there, but when we start to thread all over again, I'm pretty sure everything would stay in place. But there you have it. Those would be frog legs, similar to on the back of a popper or something like that. And uh, let's set that aside and put our mouse back in here. Of course, when you have OCD, the hook has to be perfectly level. And you don't notice it so much until you see it on a camera. What we're looking at there is some, I believe that's 3 aught, and I believe it's Danville thread. I was going to take the bobbin apart and show you which thread it is. Uh, and I realized that the little sticker that was on the end of the stuff fell off a long time ago. So I bought several spools of this stuff originally when I bought it. I was using it for anything that required copper wire or something like that. I was trying to use thread, this thread as a substitute, but I found it's pretty, pretty durable, real strong, and, and not a bad thread for uh, spinning in deer hair. So here we're going to clean and stack a, a small bunch of that Comparadon or that, or I'm sorry, I don't think that was Comparadon. I think that was um, uh, coastal deer hair. And it, it's got nice coloration. It's got nice boring on the end and um, makes a good looking, good looking bug. But we just want a little batch here to kind of get started. And I want to cover up the top half of that hot spot on the back of this where the tail's tied in. So I'll kind of get that wrapped around on top. Now we won't really be spinning deer hair here. You could. And you could just take the body hair and spin it up and let it flare out and trim it to shape. But I like the effect of having the, the tips stay on top. And I've seen several guys tie mouse patterns this way. And, uh, I don't know, it makes a good looking fly. So I'll trim the butts off in this case. And there you have it. That's one mouse's butt. And we're ready to get started with the, the body. And it's going to be a little bit repetitive. There are about five sections of this deer hair. Um, you clean it out. There's a lot of fuzz in this stuff. And you want to take that out so that it doesn't spin around the hook. Or we still want it to flare. Um, but we really want to hold the, the tips of the hair on top. So let's get this piece stacked and get it back here. Adjust the camera so you can see a little more. I did some of that out of the shot and I apologize for that. 
and you're the one man band working the camera and tying the fly. Um, and I'm kind of learning as I go. So I kept the tips of the second bunch about even with that first little batch of hair I put in. And one little trick here is you'll see if you hold the bobbin straight above, pull it up between the hair and pull it straight up, it helps you divide the hair so that you can pull it down. And a key to this fly is to leave those tips on top, pull the rest of that hair down, and then it'll flare a little bit. Some of it gets in the way, as you can see. Um, but you want to wrap back over it and kind of angle it down and back. And then, so the hollow, you know, more full-bodied hair is on the bottom. Um, that's interesting there too, and I should mention that though. Those, those hollow hairs, if you get a couple of stray hairs on top, they, they pluck out pretty easy, easily. So again, this is kind of repetitive. We'll get a batch and we'll clean it. Uh, it's a good time to mention. I've heard that, you know, people try and give you an idea, like I want, I want to use a pencil width of hair. In fact, I don't even know if kids today know what a pencil is. Um, but I use a pencil width or I use a, a hook gaps worth of hair or something like that. Um, I don't know that any of that gives you the right idea or helps you. Um, seeing it kind of helps and the videos make it easier. And this is probably a good time to mention, I put this in one of my books, but I've had to do this wrong quite a few times to make it look easy or easier when I actually do it here. So there's no substitute for experience. You know, and every hair is a little bit different. And, um, and you'll just have to you know, work at it. If you don't like what you see, cut it off and, and do it again. So each batch gets, at this point, a little bigger and a little shorter. And we're starting to build that, you know, that little hunched up back of the mouse here. And you can see I pulled the thread straight up again. We gathered up the rest of the hair and pulled it underneath and back. And we're going to wrap back over it. The other trick I want to mention is you can't, it's really hard to change the direction of hair if you're wrapping all in the same place. So. Don't be afraid that when you're tying this in to wrap forward a little bit and then wrap back over it. And I hope that shows in the video and you, you know what I'm trying to say there. So another big bunch of hair, clean it out. If I was a better video editor, I may have put this stuff in high speed and, and raced you to the end, but Again, I apologize and I'm sorry for the extra few minutes it may take to get to the, the end of this fly. So we go all the tips into the stacker, give it a couple of wraps. Put the tip ends toward the back. We don't want to be flipping this in our fingers too many times. Um, don't make it uneven again and defeat the purpose of stacking it. Here again, hold it a little shorter and on top. And spin my thread a little bit to cord it up and to make sure it doesn't jump too far forward. Two or three wraps. And if we quit right there, it probably would spin on the hook. But the uh, if you go those couple of spiral loops forward through the, the hair that's flared out um, and then wrap and work your way back over, it really doesn't want to spin. Another thing here is a lot of guys like to put in a little drop of head cement or something in between bundles of deer hair as they spin them or tie them in. Um, that's not a bad idea. You can do that if you want to. Uh, keep it away from that silicone leg. A lot of the head cement will, uh, will kind of eat through the silicone. And then we just did a, a quick look at the bottom. You can see the hairs flared out pretty evenly. And here I'm all excited. I'm, I want to show you what we do with this rat tail cord. And uh, I started to, to put that in here. I know the eyes go in next, but I'm not quite ready for them. But here we cut off a piece. I'm showing you the tip of a, a cigarette lighter. Or, and uh, we kind of meld each end of that cord 
and you get a nice little beady eye on each end that looks like what you would find on a mouse. So the trick there is to kind of figure out how long, if I want something about five sixteenths of an inch at a finished length, I, I about double that. I think the original piece was five eighths and I melt each side, hold it and melt each side until I get the length that I want. And there again, a little experimentation. The, the measurements are for reference and the real thing might be something different. Um, the other thing to note here is if you're doing bigger bugs and when we do the frog, I was using paracord instead of that rat tail cord. It's a little bigger in diameter to start with and it produces a little bigger BDI. So we'll brush out the deer hair, make sure it's kind of evenly spaced and flared out. You can see I got kind of lucky there and most of the, the tips stayed on top and most of the uh, other hair is, is on the bottom the way I hoped. And like most deer hair flies, uh, you want, whether it's a streamer or, or something else, um, coming in and establishing where the belly is going to be first is, is kind of key. At least it works for me when it comes to making, uh, getting the right shape for the finished fly. So I come in, you got to open up that hook gap. You got to leave a little space there. And those hooks are nice. They're, they're a nice wide gap and um, it shouldn't be any problem. And the rest is spaced out. And here I'm kind of cutting this angle to get started. What I picture when I'm trimming this is maybe a strawberry or something like that. And, um, you know, a little thicker on one end and tapers you know, down smaller towards the back. So I'll take it out of the vise and I'll, I'll hide all that other trimming that I do from you. Um, somehow I missed the video and I think it was off camera, so I apologize for that. And uh, we'll clip off a few more hairs. And here we're kind of pinching off those butt sections of hair that were on top. If you pinch and pull, those kind of break right out and the tips stay. I know they seem to break out pretty easy, but the fly is pretty durable. The rest of the hair stays there. And you can see it's kind of that strawberry shape, maybe a misshapen strawberry, but it's there. And we'll get it back in the vise and level it up and preen it a little bit just to make it look more like a mouse body. And it's not packed real tight. You can see that. Um, if it gets kind of wet and floats a little lower in the water, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, of course, you can treat it and make it float higher if you need to. And the uh, foam on the front helps kind of raise it, the shape of it helps kind of raise it back up and with each tug. Now here we're tying in the eyes, eyes that we made. Um, you want to leave kind of a, a little bit of space behind the hook eye. We're going to fold a piece of foam over here, so we need room for that. A couple of cross wraps is all you need. These, these aren't going to pull out. Again, you can put a little head cement here if, or super glue if you feel like you need to. And then I, I feel like there's a little bit of a gap behind the eyes, so I'm going to get another little tuft of hair and, and kind of clean that, stack it, and, and tie it in. I probably could have edited out some of the stacking once you've seen it done. It, it's pretty much the same thing. But here we are holding it on top. And cord up the thread a little bit and put a couple of wraps behind. And then pull it down in there. And that'll help lock those eyes in place too. And we'll trim those butts out. Being careful not to cut out too much of the hair behind those. And there you have it. We're uh, getting pretty close here. Now we have to put our craft foam and I kind of mark with a pen the width that I'm shooting for just a little less than the width of the eyes so that those little beady eyes poke out the sides. So here's our strip. And it's probably a little over an inch long. We're going to fold it in top and bottom. Um, right now, again, off camera, because I didn't zoom out, um, 
putting a needle through, a bodkin through in about the middle, and that'll help us push it over the eye of the hook. So I'll kind of stretch that over and, and fold it into place. And one thing I kind of learned here is that you don't have to fold the top and the bottom and tie it at the same time. In fact, I think it comes out better if you don't. Those couple of thread wraps kind of pull it in a little bit and help those eyes pop out. And we'll kind of do the same thing underneath. Fold it, squeeze it a little bit, put a couple of wraps to hold it in place. And then the next part, these little like crisscross wraps across the top. I saw Cheech do this, Cheech from Fly Fish Food. He did it in a video and it looked kind of cool, but it's a nice way to get these couple of wraps in, but then get the thread back up to the hook eye so that I can tie off right behind the hook eye. I want to fill that gap a little bit where the hook, close, the hook eye closes, they're not perfect. And, you know, five or six turn whip finish up there around the hook is nice and solid rather than around the foam. So we'll trim the thread out of the way. And then now the ears, right? Some mice are tied, some have whiskers, some have little legs. Um, they put little ears on them, whether they're made of foam or feathers or tufts of hair. Um, in this case, what I figured out was that I don't think bass are that picky. So if you get something on top like that and I, you know, in the water and while you're fishing, it kind of rolls around. It's not always perfectly on top, but it represents a different look like an ear might look like to a, a bass in the heat of battle. And I don't think they look that close and they definitely don't count and say, what well, this only has one ear instead of two. So I'm not going to eat it. And you could get kind of cute here and tie in some rubber legs while you're folding that foam in. And um, some of those you know, thinner rubber legs maybe and let them flap around. You'll see them on the frog pattern. Uh, you could leave some whiskers hang out the front if you want to make it look more like a mouse. But I think that's more for you than the fish. And I'm just using a little bit of Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails to go over my thread wraps. And there you can see that little pink spot showing through at the back by the tail. I've done some of these with leather for tails or um, rabbit zonker strips that are trimmed. So, you know, if you have a preference, you don't have to use the, the silly legs. I, I did it because I bought them for something else and it didn't work for that. And I kind of like them here. So thanks for sticking with me. We're looking at the uh, frog version. Thanks for watching and check me out on Amazon.